YouTube Quinn Way coming to y'all with that basketball analysis on analysisplayground.com and on YouTube. We're gonna talk about the top five duos and an honorable mention, and we're gonna do it like we usually do it. We're gonna start off with the honorable mention: um, Tyrese Halliburton and Pascal Siakam. Yeah, they got to the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, they really do mesh well because one is an unselfish perimeter player and one is an interior player that can hit a mid-range jump shot and finish above the rim by going straight up and being more physical i think that this was something that we've seen that could happen and it, it just like having De'Aaron fox and sabonis is just they just don't have the numbers they just don't have the success that you know the pacers have right now and it's, it's always going to be that ideal one-two punch of i can score if i want to or i can pass it to you if i want to just making it tough to defend when you especially have the right teammates around both of the your duos and i feel like this duo has the ability to space the floor has the ability to dominate the paint has the ability to really you know even play well in transition and they just a fun, exciting team just to watch because of how that style of inside out is still existing. And people knew that this would work. It was obvious. And by Pascal being unselfish and long and lanky, a solid defender, a solid rebounder, a great team player, a decent screen setter, that's all you really need to do is make Tyrese Halliburton's job easier and he can return the favor also. And that's what we've seen so far since this tandem been together and it's really fun to see them you know grow with each other game and make each other job more simpler and more efficient and if you're going to be able to do that and have the playoff success then you're going to be one of the best duos in the league especially when you look at them as all nba players and all-star players like they have been in their career and now they can do it together and possibly continue to make great runs you know, in the postseason, which is what it's all about. Your your regular season just preps you for what you need to remember, what you need to do, and how you need to play against certain teams and certain matchups so you can be able to win the championship. But, you know, they're still figuring that out. Number five, Dame and Giannis. I know we didn't see the most of them in the playoffs as Giannis was injured and Dame went out injured, which actually helped Tyrese and Pascal a lot made the run that they made but you know you can't really get mad that they took advantage of it because that's what they have to do that's what they're supposed to do and i feel like this team has a little bit more that they can show us a little bit more that they can give us but Giannis is so dominant as a player as a 30 and 10 player as a guy that is a solid passer and a great defender still for the milwaukee bucks i would be crazy not to put this as a great duo even if they took that last slot to make it to this duo being great it just shows you that one player can make all the difference in the nba and that's why i have to put them at number five because dame is still a clutch player he is a guy that can still take over the game he is a guy that is a willing passer especially to a guy like Giannis, who is one of the best players in the nba especially top five top three best players in the nba right now and of course you want that relationship to work because it can get you a championship especially if you continue to do your part which dame really did play well to me in my personal opinion in the playoffs and the numbers kind of back that up and then you look at the fact that the regular season dame was able to still play his game while still letting Giannis get the best out of his game and it looked it good it looked good enough in you know the regular season even though they fell a little bit short of the 50 win mark it was mainly because Giannis wasn't healthy down that stretch um to you know make them have the best ending and the best start to the postseason but other than that when you look at the fact that one guy can't be guarded and the other guy can play off the fact that he can't be guarded and still get his isolation and still get his his moves and you still can play defense to help the other guy because you actively and cover a lot of space it makes sense why this duo ended up getting together and you know now they want to make a little bit more noise compared to what they did last year and that's motivation for them to come back better another one that people gonna sleep on is bam and jimmy because they made it to two nba finals and i know they came up short i know they were still fun and competitive they did the things that they could do they tried their hardest they just a little bit more talent 
they can be able to achieve that goal, possibly depending on what the fit is and how guys play in the playoffs because it's about your superstars playing like superstars and your role players stepping up in those moments that, you know, you need them to do in those predicaments, in those situations. So Jimmy Butler, you know, play well and continue to play well, just like Bam on both ends of the court. They hustle, they scrap, they play together. And it just sometimes you just fall up a little short or a team just are more better, more prepared and have the better matchup. And it's just tough to get over that hump. But at least we know that they are a team that can get a championship eventually because they continue to have that chance multiple times. Once you get to the finals multiple times, you know you wanted the best teams. You know you wanted the best duos. And I know the Heat don't have always the greatest record. I know they don't have the greatest regular seasons like these other teams. But at least they still handling their business and still living up to the hype that they know that they can live up to and to the play and to the level that they know their stars can play up to, even if they do it a little later in the season, even if they do it late and wait to the postseason, at least they still doing what they're supposed to do as a team. And you got to hold them, you know, to the respect of other teams and they still get it done like the other teams. They just doing it their way and they using their strategy. And that's all you can really do. But we know that it's working for the most part. Now they got to get it done as a duo. Luka and Kyrie, people say they're low. Well, they're not really low because it still is one of the best duos. They didn't play particularly well offensively every series, especially in the finals. They still got some more growing. They still got some more maturing. They still got some more things they can be better at, especially because they try to foul draw and they try to complain a lot about how the game is, you know, refereed. But other than that, Luka is unstoppable for the most part, and he is a guy that's a willing passer, and he's a guy that can break down the defense, and Kyrie can do the same. He can get to his, any shot he wants to, any position that he wants to, you know, usually against the competition that he, they go against. And it just showed you that this team had two guys that really made it difficult to walk up that court and decide – how they want to score and what position they want to put you in. And you just had to fight, you know, the whole game just to not be in foul trouble, just to not be falling for their tricks and the moves that they can do to you to throw you off balance. And that's the greatness of this team. You know, the fact that their duo is so great having the ball in their hands and they're so great at figuring out how to score and assist and keep guys active. It just made them one of the toughest duos to ever um, play in this league, and that's why I was able to get to the finals. And then Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic, I know they lost in the second round a set of the conference finals or the NBA finals, but it was only one season, and they had a great regular season, and they had a great postseason. They just couldn't deliver you know, the performances that they needed out of their duo to be able to get it done. And it was close. They got closer. They got kept trying to fight. They kept trying to play the best way they could. But they looked at gas. They looked at fatigue. They looked at tired. They looked at a little slow. And they, they didn't really, you know, do what they needed to do to get the job done. But they still played better than other duos. They still played the way they needed to play to put them in position to almost get to the conference finals. Plus, it's a team sport, not really a duo sport, but the duo do the bulk of the work. And I feel like this duo still is one of the best, and they still have proved it because they actually got it done by winning the championship, which these other duos came close or didn't do yet. Or they still got more work to put in to get to that level because they already did it. Now it's just about how many championships can Jamal Murray and Jokic win together as a duo and the new duo that's at the top of the mountain is Jalen Brown and Tatum. We've been saying that they're the best scoring duo in the league or, you know, that's the, the type of way we present them. But they are solid defenders, too. They are decent playmakers, too. They are guys that can step up in the clutch or step up in those big moments. We've seen Jalen Brown do it and in the Indiana series. We've seen Jason Tatum do it throughout his career. And we've seen Jason Taylor become an all-star slash all-NBA player as an individual and a gold medalist, showing you that he's willing to accept any role that it takes to win and, and he can step up when they need him to step up. And he already proved that as a Celtic. And we went to a lot of conference finals. We went to the NBA finals in 2022. And now we have the ability 
just possibly win multiple championships. As this duo keeps saying, sometimes grass ain't greener. So I'm going to start keep rocking with Jalen Brown and Jalen Brown. So I'm going to keep rocking with Tatum. And then they eventually got it done. And they're still in their mid-20s. And they have an opportunity to win not one but multiple possibly you know, as their careers continue to go on at Celtics and bringing back a lot of guys, bringing back a lot of chemistry. Most of these guys fit around them. They they play well around them, and we know it because we've seen them win 60-plus games. So not only did they d dominate the regular season, they made it look easy in the postseason. And now we see teams gearing up, putting more defenders at the guard position, at the wing position, the matchup to where Derek Wright and Drew Holiday and Jalen Brown does. And now it's going to be that rock fest type of games where people defending and people playing well and people cutting you off and people making you shoot more and people making sure you can't get to the paint. People playing one on one so they don't have to help as much. And it just makes the league better when you have to find a way to innovate and recreate or evolve what you do to stay dominant and great at the game. And since these young guys are still watching footage and studying the game and getting Olympic experiences because Derek White, Drew Holiday, and Jason Tatum was all at the Olympics, the only thing that was missing was Jalen Brown, really, because Przingis is injured. And that's what they need, too, a healthy Przingis. And this team will be fully loaded for another championship run, which people have them as the favorites anyway to win the championship, which they should, based off how dominant they were on their run to ending as the NBA champion. So new number one, Tatum and Brown, they was always close. They was working, they was putting in their time, they was putting in the work, they was putting in consistency, they was putting in, you know, even Draymond Green said, it's the time for the Celtics to win. They kept getting close. They lost in seven last year to the Heat. And it is eventually you're going to dominate so much until you have your chance and your matchups go your way and the, the brackets go your way. Take advantage of them. Get the job done the respectful way. And if people think you're not at what you are or they think they can challenge you better, there's another season for that. There's another postseason for that. And we'll see if they can live up to that hype and get back to the finals like they did before, which is this season, and they got it done. Let's see if they can do it again. Even if it ain't back-to-back, -back, this team is so young and so hungry to be great, which I love to see, especially as a fan of this team, that we want to see if they can put it together again and stay healthy and give the NBA playoffs their best shot and win again. Other than that, comment, like, subscribe, and share. Um, if you're new to the channel, I got over 2,000 plus videos that you can watch this summer. And you will enjoy the content, especially if you enjoyed this video. And I got breakdowns and tributes to great players and legends. You will see that on the channel. Uh, if you still been subscribed, continue to watch, continue to like, and subscribe. If you're still loving the content, I continue to produce on this channel. And continue to check out the videos that you may have missed because I do upload a lot so you can get caught up to where you need to be on the channel, especially because the summer is, is coming to an end almost in the fall and the season about to start again. And you know, I'm gonna be putting out multiple videos, you know, <laughs> during a regular season that is gonna be tough to catch up. That's the purpose of the notification bell. That's the purpose of being subscribed. So you can get it when you wanna get it, watch it when you wanna watch it, but still know that it had came out that day and you know how great I am at making content, and that's all that really matters. So other than that, goal is to 3K, goal is to a million views total on the channel, and continue to gain more subscribers like we have been doing over the last, what, 10, 12 years. Other than that, Quinn Wade signing out with the Basketball Analysis Podcast, and continue to support it the best way you can.